Hello, so we continue with our previous session. So as you can see, we have this voltage source right here. And uh, then we have a diode connected in the circuit and uh, across this is the load register. And we see that we apply this voltage source uh, as a sine voltage source, which has this property. So if you right click this, uh, this, this voltage source, basically we will see its properties. And uh, if we right click the diode, we will also see its properties. So let me just show you that, how we can do that. So let me just uh, close this, come back to here, right click on the voltage source. You see, this is a sine wave voltage uh, right here. And we see that it has a DC offset set to zero, amplitude of one volt, frequency of one kilohertz, and we want 100 cycles to of it. Similarly, we have taken the ideal diode, as you can see here, right click here, and we see don't we don't see any properties or manufacturer name. We choose, we can choose a particular diode model from after clicking the pick new diode button here. Otherwise, we just keep it ideal diode, assuming it has a forward voltage of 0 0.6 volt or 0 0.7 volts. Remember, uh, forward voltage is nothing but the turn on voltage of the diode when it is forward bias or also called as cut-in voltage or threshold voltage. So during the positive half cycle of this waveform of this voltage source that we see here, let's let me use the pointer. Uh, so during the positive half cycle of the sine wave source, the diode gets forward bias. So it acts as a closed switch and the current of the circuit will yeah. flow through the diode and it will flow through the load. And that is how, that's the ID or diode current, okay? And uh, the voltage drop across the diode when it's a forward bias will be about 0 0.6 volt or 0 0.7 volt. And so if we have a one volt, peak voltage, so 1 minus 0 0.64, uh, 0 0.6, approximately 0 0.4 volt, uh, again, uh, alternating in nature uh, during the positive half cycle will appear across this load uh, register R1. And to do the transient analysis, we see that we have uh, this dot tran command. Uh, we have seen this, please refer to previous model. To understand the syntax of this command. So dot tran, it starts with the zero seconds and uh, all these parameters are there. Let me show you how these parameters will work. So if we, if we right click this uh, command, go here and right click it through the mouse or your keypad and you see this, uh, your window appears simulation command. So we have chosen the transient analysis as you can see here, and uh, stop time is 100 millisecond. Zero is the start uh, time to start saving the data. Maximum time step we have chosen is 10 millisecond. And this is how the syntax right in the bottom appears here. So we click OK. And once that is done, let me just uh, run the simulation. So we go here. Uh, where we, where we'll go is uh, use the simulation command. So we we click here this button right here, okay, and then we will see how the simulation will appear. So we click, we ran the simulation, and look at this. But before that, let me get rid of this annotation I have used. So I will use the eraser to just help you understand the waveform that we have done here. So you rightly can see now the kind of uh, waveform we have. So what we can do is zoom in the portion of the waveform and try to understand. So green is our output, which is on the schematic you see here, this is our output, V out. And blue is the V in, in the waveform, blue signal is the V in. So V in as rightly jumps from zero to one volt peak and then comes to minus one volt. So it's two volt peak to peak waveform. And we have 
during the positive half cycle, we see here uh, our diode is forward bias and it allows the current flow through it and it acts as a switch. So output voltage, which is green in nature, is about uh, is about. Let me let me just. Uh, right click the waveform window and auto axis the y axis uh, so you see here uh, the the voltage peak voltage at the output is about 0 0.4 volt as we predicted so uh, this peak voltage is 1 volt this is 0 0.4 volt so difference is 0 0.6 volt which is the diode forward voltage drop right here okay that's how we can do that so during uh, for 100 cycles, so let's say we right click the voltage source, we just want 10 cycles. Um, we click OK and we run the simulation button again, write a run. So we have 10 cycles. We just go to waveform window and zoom in this portion. You can see that with the help of mouse or keypad, you see now we have a very good waveform. So during the negative half cycle, the diode is switched off. We don't see any output current or voltage to the circuit that's it so we call this C circuit this circuit is acting as an ac to dc converter so it means we have an ac waveform as an input and the dc output is in the green but is this really a dc direct current in other words we want the output to be a constant for example this is the uh, waveform uh, and this is the sinusoidal uh, signal that we have as an input, right? And uh, yeah, so it, it's like this. Uh, let's say let let me draw it uh, in a simple way to help you understand. So what we want really is our output should be constant. So if we have this signal as an input the signal as an input this is v in so the red red is our output that is this red is our v out it should be constant that is why dc ac to dc conversion ideal should be like this but right now all we have is this kind of waveform not really just uh, let me draw it well so during the positive half cycle you have this signal and again you have this signal and you have this signal so this is how we exactly see here in the in the waveform but ideal case we want the constant uh, waveform so to some extent we can do that what we can do is we just use a capacitor across this register r1 so what we do here we go to go to the components so let's 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 go to components and choose the value of a capacitor right here okay so let me do that so i go to component library right here i clicked here and i got the library symbol and this component symbol can be so i type cap or capacitor cap capacitor comes here i click ok and i'm here so i place this capacitor here i place escape button on the keyboard and i just connect it with the wire so where i i did this i selected this wire or press f3 on the keyboard and then i try to just connect this capacitor in the Circuit. So, what is the role of the capacitor? It will try to smooth out this output waveform in green and make it appear as a constant. So, let us see how it is there. So, value of C1 to be chosen. So, I do one thing I right click this capacitor right here and see I will define its value 1 microfarad. So currently we are not using any manufacturer supplied capacitor. Otherwise we'll click this select capacitor button. Uh, we'll just use the ideal uh, model of a capacitor without any specifications, leave all these fields blanks. So when we actually design the real project, if you want to real product, design a real product, then you can use that uh, manufacturer capacitor with the specifications given. So click okay. And it's here it's, 
one microfarad across the 1k register. So let's see how the output behaves. So save, click the save button, then click the uh, simulate option and click the run. And that's it, boom. Uh, so you basically can see how our output was before after zooming and now how the output comes right here. It is the ripple that was present has been reduced by some extent. So the output voltage is uh, trying to be constant, but still there are some ripples. So what we can do, we come back to schematic, click the schematic window. Uh, okay, I plotted the current through the capacitor. I don't want, so I just go here, right click, and I click the delete distress button. So we are back here. Okay, so I come back to schematic window and you see this probe is uh, asking me to plot the current through the capacitor. This probe, if I move the mouse over any component, it shows me, do you want to plot the currents through those components, even the current through the diode, if I click right here. So we'll do that later. So let's, let's right click the value of capacitor and I, instead of one microfarad, what if I choose 10 microfarad? So I click OK and I save and run the button again and look at the green waveform, how it will change. And look at this now for the 10 cycles, we are almost uh, having this constant voltage, output DC voltage. If I right click the capacitor again and make it, let's say 100 microfarad, I click again, okay, and I click run. So almost there. So you basically can see that I have nearly constant voltage of 0. Uh, 0. Uh, uh, it's about, about, uh, about 280 or 290 approximately approximately 320 millivolt so you basically need to adjust the value of a capacitor to remain close to 400 millivolt which is present which we predicted so let's say 50 micro capa uh, microfarad capacitor is basically giving you so this is called as uh, uh, filtering the output filtering process so up to register your circuit is a rectifier and with the capacitor we you capacitor acts as a filter so it filters out the ripples present in the dc waveform output waveform and gives you a constant output uh, across the load uh, so that's how the that's how the circuit works here okay so we'll see uh, some more parameters here for example, if I right click the waveform window, add plot plane. I have another plane right here. Let me uh, actually erase the other things right here that we have used. Even we don't want to see this uh, waveforms uh, illustration now. Okay, so once that is done, what I see here is I have an empty plot in which I want to right click and I will choose add trace option. So you see, we have various stresses available to be plotted. V in and V out, we have plotted. I want IC1 to be understood. I want to know the current through the capacitor. Uh, I want the current through the diode D2. Uh, I want the current through the register R1. So I can select them and accordingly, I can basically plot. So uh, you see, once I click any button, these uh, expressions to add gets added here down. So just select them all and press the delete button from the keyboard. And just let's say I want to plot ID2, the current through the dial. So I click OK. So you see now, uh, this is how uh, the current through the diode is also constant. Initial spike about 140 milliampere is there. So if you right click the waveform and zoom to fit, so you see now there is a, still a constant current flowing through the diode. Uh, we see that in the red button. Similarly, current through the register would be plotted if we click the uh, click on the uh, click on the diode uh, register value. Current through the capacitor is also if you click there. So on the top plate, you see these all different colors and the currents are being plotted. Okay, so. 
right click here in the view, not right click, just a right click view. And we have just like explained earlier in earlier section, we have so many options. So spice necklace. So we click here. Here is a ready-made spice necklace that we can use in other circuit simulators. So just copy this or save this file, uh, copy this, paste it in a notepad or Word document, save it with the .cir.net or .sp extension. Please refer to the previous modules. We have, we have explained it there. And then open this ready-made file, spice file in a circuit simulator to run your circuit simulation. So you can see that the voltage V in, how it is defined, register, diode, capacitor, and then there is a model for a diode. There is an analysis specified and dot in, hence the command right here. Uh, we go to tools. Uh, we can have the option of export the next necklist. Click here and see what it does. So you see now, this basically, it gives us diode, time, domain, half-wave rectifier. This is a file name, which is our file name. I have given it name. And then express PCB. So if you have a want to build a PCB for this circuit, so basically, uh, let's say express PCB is the PCB design software. You can have that installed in your computer. And this Spice Nest Netlist, which has uh, a dot net extension dot net can be opened in that pcb design software so the software of pc will will automatically pick up these components in the pcb software and will have a pcb auto design for you based on your spice net list that's all so let us see, we just uh, save it like, uh, okay, we, we want to save it. And uh, do you want to replace it? Okay, maybe yes, okay, that's it. And this is how you see, it generated the uh, Express PCB netlist. So LT Spice, you can see that part ID tables. So you have voltage source, register with the value of 1000 ohm, diode D2, capacitor of 50 microfarad, and net names table. What are the net names? Net means wires. So V in is a net one, zero, three, V out is six. So that's the that's the spice convention. And what is how the nets are connected together? We have explained this in all previous models. So please don't miss that. Okay, so you see all these automatic auto-generated net connection tables. So, but this is for the understanding of the software not for us we don't want to understand this this is what the software will understand okay so that's all for you in this module so we stop here